Welcome to Prunership Diaries. Today we have with us Shivani Agarwal. She is a self-taught artist and designer, a computer science and math major from the University of Waterloo. She worked in the software industry before she rediscovered her childhood passion for art. Has she set out on a journey in self-discovery where she met her spiritual master? Art became a medium for her to reconnect with her inner intuition and knowing something which the education system had completely denied to her. She began Shivani Heart and Design in 2017, through which she holds yearly exhibitions of her heart, along with designing various products from her heart that she sells during the festive season. She's also designed a range of products with the Isha Life, like coasters, lampshades, notebooks, scarves, Along with this, she takes up freelance design work of logos, packaging design, fabric design, wedding card designs, and custom painting work. And there is also an interesting project which she started during the pandemic, which is called as Doodles of Wisdom. I won't go much into it right now because I think there is a story to it, so we'll get into it much later. Uh, so Shivani, welcome to Prunership Diaries. I'm so glad and it's a pleasure to have you here on my show. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I've heard you say that, uh, you know, you, you worked in the software industry. And uh, you were tired and bored of the Monday, the usual, you know, education, then career, and then a job. And uh, so I want to know when and at what point did you decide to leave the job in the software industry and, and get to exploring life? And I want to know what went through your mind at this point. Okay. Um well, you know, um, I kind of did what everybody does till that point. Like I had gone to school, then it was like, you know, Indian parents, you do computers or you do biology, you become a doctor. So it was the same kind of path that I went through. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Canada to study. So I, I thought computer science was the best degree at that point in that university. So I did computer science and then I started working in a software company right. and it was about two years into it and uh, you know layoffs started in our company so mm -hmm. some of my very close friends at that time they uh, started getting laid off like um, I would see these tables empty and you know just like a few days ago we used to be chatting going for tea going out for walks and it just started feeling kind of like um, that everything's very temporary you know um, I was only around 24 at that time 25 and Mm -hmm. that feeling of that you know what am I really doing with my life and you know to, tomorrow it could be me you know it was so you know what next that kind of feeling started coming in and I didn't realize it of course I just started you know looking at other things that I like to do so the, the journey kind of started with me um, of course questioning but also start you know looking at maybe I want to do medicine maybe I want to go into education working with children so I just started exploring different avenues um, volunteering with the hospital to see if maybe that was my calling and um, that's how the whole uh, process started and um, that's when I also came to India you know so I found a company that was working with the uh, children in uh, you know the outdoors and uh, it was again, I just felt like software was something, you know, I remember when I used to look up jobs in, in software and it was funny because I left my job and within a span of one week, um, mm -hmm. one of the best companies in Canada, which was uh, IBM at that time, you know, they sent me a contract, uh, it was a contract position. And something which I would have craved, you know, so I, I remember getting that job opportunity and I was like, wow, this is it, right? And then I look at the job description and I see myself like putting up a pretense of wanting to do testing and development. And I was like, what is it? You know, this this angst started coming in. What does it mean to me to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. And that's when um, I went for the job interview. I got the offer and I right. called my mom 
Um, and I just said to her, mom, I don't want this job. And, you know, I remember her just saying to me, Shivani, follow your heart, mm. you know, and, and that was changed it for me. I think that was the one point where if I had gone one direction, I would have probably moved in that direction. And, and that change of direction completely toppled my life around. It was not that to go with your heart means everything is opened up and, you know, right. so it was a very long journey after that, but that was the point at which um, I made that decision that I don't want to go anymore with just my compulsions that I need to do this or I need to, you know, um, make money, get a job. Right. Those things are always there, but I wanted to follow something more deeper, my passion. So that was the, the switch that happened. Wow. I mean, uh, that's amazing. I, th- I think uh, we all go through it at some point in time that we are doing something and somewhere I think it could be a certain experience which we come by or I think there's just a thought which creeps into our minds that no there is something more to life isn't yeah. isn't isn't that what happened yes exactly yeah. I mean I think uh, you know you just that's what like society conditions you that you know you just kind of um you don't even think actually and even now like now when I see people um, you know, it's not that you're not happy. I mean, it's not that even doing those normal things, I'm saying that people are miserable. Many people are happy just doing it, but you don't know that there is something more. And it's only when that question starts really eating you up. It's not even like a question which is like, oh, I'm just thinking, what is the purpose of life? It's not like that. It's it's like every cell in your body starts like asking you to move in that direction. That's what happens. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, coming to what you mentioned, uh, uh, you spoke about the volunteering program which uh, you did for the kids. So, could you tell us more about it? I think it was a volunteering program in the Himalayas. Uh, no. Yeah. It wasn't a volunteering program. It was like a a paid kind of pro- program, but they trained you for two months. Um, right. So we basically went to um, Sitla Khet at that time, which was um, in Uttarakhand. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the whole training was about how to get children to start reflecting on themselves, on their own inner self. So, you know, I mean, now it's become much more prevalent in schools also to do soft skills or to do self-development kind of trainings. Mm-hmm. Uh, for children but at that time this was like 2006 it was very new the concept so it was a company right. called I Cover I mm-hmm. um and they were essentially working on you know getting children through experiential learning to go deeper into themselves right mm-hmm. so uh, we took used to take children to these uh, you know outdoor um, uh, places which they had camps set up. It, it was in uh, both Himachal and Uttarakhand, okay. and different age groups. You know, like it was around nine to eleven, and then twelve to fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um, so we would take them rock climbing or backpacking, and after that we'd you know bring them back, and in the evenings we'll have these sessions where we'll do. You know, exercises on team building so it's kind of like what you see in um in human resource training in uh, companies but it was for children yes and you know it was really nice how kids like otherwise you know that's what i'm saying now it's different in the schools but at that time children had no concept of kind of just being going deeper into themselves or seeing their issues with people with other children working in a team I really enjoyed that process and I think it was also right after this whole um, churning had started in me. So I was for the first time also um, doing something which was meaning something to me, you know, otherwise I had my whole life kind of done stuff, which was just because, you know, okay, I have to get a career and I have to make money. So I, I was, I was almost like feeling like this wow factor that I've just found it, you know? So I worked with kids there and then I came back and the same company used to also um, work with children in schools. So that time they were working with Heritage School in Gurgaon. Mm-hmm. So we used to do like a curriculum development for the school. So I used to also teach uh, for some time. So it was almost like, you know, um, a total shift from what I was doing right. and um, really finding meaning in my work, mm-hmm. you know, um, working with kids and stuff. But, you know, um, still 
it, there was a there it wasn't you know it was like I found what I love to do right but then there was still something else churning in which was not keeping me totally you know just settled right. with what I where I so that's how I was experiencing it at that time yeah okay I think moving to the next part I think that will get the answer to you know what you were going through so I think I think at that point in time you also started with a, with the spiritual journey so uh how did it all begin and uh, you know did it help you to figure out what you wanted to do I uh, well uh, yeah um I so it, it it was right like when all this was going on when I started teaching in the school and I was as I told you feeling like I found it yeah um that's when you know my dad introduced me to um Isha and mm-hmm. you know uh, he told me there's a program happening in the ashram which was a seven day course called wholeness with sadguru at that time right so I just decided to go for that and um it was very sudden i didn't really ever think of spirituality spiritual path or anything like that nothing was in my mind not even yoga i really knew much about but i just thought okay let's experience something different because my dad had really been talking a lot about sadguru mm-hmm. um so i went to the course and i um it was nice like i was enjoying myself but i enjoying in the sense like i was meeting a lot of new people I was learning from new practices so hatha yoga you know I was waking up early so it was a little different lifestyle and you know that kind of so it was making me feel good in my body and mind right. but I wasn't thinking too much about it like it was like okay I'll do it for 7 days and then whatever it's over yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> so right. it was um, it was only on the 5th day or so when we get initiated into the kriya mm-hmm. But, um i kind of had a very big experience um where actually sadguru used to that time initiate us into the shunya meditation <laughs> so um so we you know i went through that process and after that when we came back into the hall like i experienced a totally different like something which i had never experienced you know um mm-hmm. so i think for the second part of your question where you ask me um if the spiritual journey helped me in what i wanted to do um i would say yes it did um because i think spiritual the once you set on to the spiritual path um knowingly or unknowingly um there is a certain kind of freedom and empowerment that happens within um you're willing to take more risks you're more connected to who you are and you you are also more connected to your own inner longings desires to your own self so otherwise a human being usually struggles with always wanting security comfort stability like they don't want to take risks very easily but once on the spiritual journey a lot of these things started um you know these needs started coming down for me i found that um my inner self became more empowered where i wanted to find out who i really was i wanted to discover what i really wanted to do and so that kept pushing me and i tried out several different things actually i you know dabbled into dance i did um blogging i um even did storytelling and um i think i found myself much more in art because it was much closer to who i felt i was as a person i felt i was being very authentic when i was doing art um in everything else like i used to feel at some level i have to put up a front but with art there was a certain authenticity it was like um you know i just felt i'm being who i am and i think that came from my spiritual process itself so in that sense the spiritual journey really helped me figure out what i wanted to do at the same time i would say that um the spiritual process also was making me realize that inner fulfillment and you know that sense of ease it doesn't come because of what you want to do 
or what you're doing, it comes from within. Like it doesn't matter what you're doing. If your inside is unsettled, then nothing is going to fulfill you. And I think that was the biggest learning for me because I used to try to find fulfillment and happiness and that sense of completion within myself through my work. And on this journey, as I volunteered, as I was, you know, doing my practices, my yogic processes, I started realizing that it's actually, I mean, what you're doing always brings a certain sense of well-being and purpose and happiness, but it's not about that. It's, it's about something which when you're connected to within yourself, then that ease comes from within. So in that sense, I think the spiritual journey, yes, did help me figure out what I wanted to do. At the same time, it helped me realize that at the end of the day, true happiness comes from within, not from what you're doing. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, so I want to know, with that being said, uh, so you did understand that there's actually nothing to do. Uh, <laughs> but then I want to know, how did... Uh, art come into picture and also uh, you did mention you dabbled in uh, dance social media marketing so i want to know if the spiritual journey uh, yeah. were you able to uh, express yourself through these different mediums like it could be art it could be dance or uh, blogging so were you able to express yourself at least like with whatever that you were going through inside yeah. in your inner journey yeah. Were you able to put yeah. that forth or was it difficult <clears throat> to put it out? What was it like? I just want to know what was happening in your mindscape. <laughs> so, you know, Shweta, I was going through a lot um, during that time. I mean, now when I look back, um, the spiritual journey is a very beautiful process. But at the same time, it brings up so much within yourself that you are not even fully sometimes ready to face um you when they talk about going deep within um through spiritual process or through you know the spiritual path it's not that you're going in somewhere deep it's just that a lot of things which you don't even know about yourself or even circumstances around you the closest people around you um, a lot of things come up one is um externally the other is even in your own body, in your mind, it's almost like kind of, you know, um, you're, you're kind of breaking down the foundation of, of your building and rebuilding this, this structure again. It's almost like that. And so if I look back, there was just so much going on during this period. And in many ways, I think, um, Everything I was doing, whether it was art, whether it was my poetry, whether I was blogging, it was really giving me an outlet to also express what was going on within. And I mean, I would say like I remember even, you know, at that time when people would look at my art, like now when people look at my art, they tell me we feel so happy and they're so, you know, your work gives us so much joy we feel cheerful but it wasn't always like that like I remember when I first started maybe almost 10 11 years ago there was a time I was making very dark work um you know I didn't even realize it at the time but I remember my dance teacher telling me that you know your work is so disturbing and I thought and I got kind of I felt bad when she said that and I started looking at it more closely but today when I see that work, I mean, it was very dark work. Like I was almost in extreme pain and, you know, whatever I was going through, I think I was expressing it on paper, sometimes realizing what I'm doing and sometimes not really realizing, but it was giving me an outlet. Um, and, and slowly I realized as my journey towards healing, towards understanding and and, and, you know, accepting myself, my journey better. As I started basically accepting myself, there was a huge shift in my own expression. Um, 
suddenly like there was it was almost like i was moving towards a different color a different color palette even my own words changed i think now i very rarely write poetry i very rarely even write because i find a lot of the word a lot of words just started disappearing from my vocabulary i just felt silent and i think in silence somehow i connect much better to art you know otherwise since i was a kid i used to write i mean writing was my first you can say first artistic passion i mean i've written practically my entire life people who know me from childhood know i i used to only write i used to paint but first i was a writer um but yeah that's almost like now it's starting to come back in a very different way but it had almost disappeared from my life for several years because i just didn't feel the need to put words you know i didn't want to put words i felt like that silence was so beautiful and art was giving me a way to connect to that silence you know very intuitively so um the spiritual path you know do it, ha- having art along with it has been so supportive to just understanding myself better to expressing myself and it's really been a journey into healing i would say um with art yes that that's beautiful um all right so i just want to get to um how did shivani art and design come into being Uh, mm-hmm. so if you could tell us the story i know you were going through your phase of you know uh, putting out paintings and doing some artwork and also learning mm-hmm. art um, yeah. i i i do know that you had a teacher so i want to know the story behind shivani art and design and how did it, how did it start so um actually i started kind of um i used to paint even when i used to dance so around one and a half years like uh, from 2000 i would say 9 itself or early 2008 i started painting but it was more than i was dancing at that time so i used to paint whenever i got time and i used to throw colors and i just used to explore movement um but it was in 2010 actually after the devi consecration i came back to delhi mm-hmm. and that was the time when uh, you know there was a real urge to find a mentor so i won't call her a teacher she's more like a mentor a guide mm-hmm. um i wasn't sure i mean i was looking for a teacher but now when i look back she's more a mentor and guide because she never really taught me anything you know it was not like oh i'm sitting and i'm learning how to draw you know sketch uh, you know a book or a still life it was just completely kind of like um giving you a space she had a beautiful artistic basement you know with books and sculptures and so giving you that space to grow and to develop your your work at the same being there for you know like she'll she'll guide you like she'll say why don't you you know do this or she, if you're doing something she'll tell you you know you can do it like that so there was guidance but it wasn't like you know like assignments or anything like that so you have to kind of find your own path and if you're not self motivated it's difficult to be in that surrounding so most of the people in the studio were all self motivated people you know otherwise you can't sustain yourself there right so so that's how my journey started and you know i was off and on because i was also volunteering with isha i was also doing um you know some work in social media marketing so like this i had a uh, limited time to do art mm-hmm. but i used to do it um around 2000 i would say 16 is when i got much more um kind of i just decided to spend more time on art right and um i started just completely like painting like i mean big sized works in fact i did like i think almost 10 of them you know in a span of one year yeah and it was like again i would say grace you know like it was something i was doing out of my own self but each one was getting like sold even without me you know um putting in that effort and that was a very beautiful feeling of course when you make something and somebody likes it enough to buy it and that's when i also started you know doing work for exhibitions so in delhi i took part in various shows um you know and um that was when i needed a kind of uh, you know a a something to to work under so i called it shivani art and design and i was also going 
different projects related to. So I always was interested in how to make art, um, you know, accessible to people because many people can't afford a big painting, you know, but they may want your artwork. So then you want to make products out of it. You want to make it much more. And I used to love adding Sadhguru's quotes to my work. So, you know, many times I wanted to <laughs> combine that. And so like this, I started creating a product line also. So that's how I created Shivani Art and Design. And um, I used to then do shows where I used to put my products and the uh, paintings. And that's how Shivani Art and Design happened. And even now, like I take design work, etc., through that, through Shivani Art and Design. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I want to know what are the products that you sell on Shivani Art and Design and what are the different varieties of art? Like if, if you could tell us about it. So um, I mostly done watercolor work in Sh under Shivani Art and Design. Um, I've, I've done various products, like I did a lot of cards. So I did uh, 10 like more mystical cards. They had all uh, designs with lotuses and you know, a lot of blues and, uh, you know, um, purples and a lot of those colors. Right. And I had a quote at the end of each card, you know, which was, again, either through Rumi or Sadhguru. Yes. And uh, so this was one pack like I had made. So I like to make very, um, you know, uh, kind of designer kind of a product. So it's not like in a mass scale at all. Right. And even now, like, as I said, with Isha Life, I did a... Um, a kind of a product line so they took these designs and then they they did the production so there's a lot of production etc involved in this so actually i did a lot of um i did gift bags mm -hmm. so you know diwali time i had all these uh you know even devi kind of gift bags and so people could you know uh, put stuff in that and then i had made necklaces wow. so i used to hand paint um cloth and then my mother is also very much into art so she used to bead it and it used to be like a proper necklace wow um and uh, then i made a lot of coasters um scarves mm -hmm. um then there was uh notebooks so I made a lot of variety of things, postcards, you know. So, um, right. but what I found at the end of the day was like, uh, you know, when I, when I had the exhibitions, etc., I used to put them out and they did really well also. But right. there is a certain um, production cost. And yes. also there is, um, when, you're, when you are involved in the creativity, then to also handle the whole production side was like getting a little too much. So... Yes. Around 2018, like I did this for two years, mm -hmm. um, creating products, selling them in exhibitions and all. Right. And then I started realizing that um, it's, it's uh, you know, you get a lot of fulfillment. I think that period gave me tremendous inner fulfillment of people buying my work. and But on a level of like profits and level yes. of the amount of time that is being put in, I started feeling that, you know, it only makes sense to go this direction if I get a, like, like somebody who's taking care of the entire production. Right. So that was why, in fact, right after that is when Isha came along, you know, and um, done this thing. So it, it, that was, again, that gave me a lot of fulfillment because I wanted to see my work on different products and yeah. on a big scale. So, so that's it. I also feel a lot of these things were giving me a lot of like contentment, maybe what, what I wanted, I was seeing that. And now I realize on a very practical basis that if you want to get into this products and, you know, um, creating things, yes. then either you have to have investors, you know, or somebody who's investing in your business. So right. then you can kind of spend. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, it's best to have um, somebody who's like, into this already like it could be like a chumbak or it could be right. um, Indian circus or somebody and then you approach them and then they take your design so they buy your designs and then they create their products so you know you either do it on a commission basis with them or you could just sell them your designs otherwise it, it, otherwise on a level of like just kind of like i'm bringing out these calendars right so yes. So on a level of like um, where people get to have it and, you know, even if it doesn't become mass, it's still okay. Right. You can do it. But if you want to go the mass scale, then you'll have to either approach places that can produce it like that 
right. or you'll have to approach corporates or something. You, on, on your personal level, you can't, I mean, unless you're like, you know, you, you have that kind of money or whatever, it's very yes. difficult to just put in money like that to do production. Yeah. Right. I mean, I was in fact wanting to ask you this question because I know, uh, you know, from, from a, uh, being an artist, we always want to like, you know, put across the work and we are so happy when it's like appreciated or it's like bought. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, we need to have a sustainable business, which, uh, you know, you rightly mentioned that, you know, at least, uh, you know, you either need to have an investor who can, you know, probably yeah. invest in what you're doing. Or you need to collaborate with uh, companies or probably some uh, some, uh, companies in the art space who are already doing this so that you can put out your product out there probably in their shops or it could be on platform. Yes. And even like, um, see, outside, there are a lot of big um, e-commerce shop spaces now. Like there is Etsy, there is Fine Art America, there is Redbubble, Mm -hmm. you know, so of spaces which give artists particularly the space to create like they create the products so you can have your entire social media you know you can start putting out that i'm doing uh you know even uh bath uh, curtains or you know like so many things they have right but then you have to take care of that production so you just get a Mission. India has started to get a few such um uh, there are companies now that are starting that Mm -hmm. um take care of your couriering and things like that so there are spaces but the thing is you know Shweta I feel like if you really want to turn it into a business especially this product side Mm -hmm. it's a whole different ball game you know and I've 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 been there because I I was very much into that thing you know creating products out of art and I did do a lot of work in that space and I won't say it's undoable it's definitely something you can do but in India, it is a little harder than if you're outside India. That's what I feel. Because yes. outside, you also have a lot of like, um, you know, these flea markets. You have yes. your, you have, and people buy art more easily than they do in India. Like here, yes. unless you're part of one of those bigger companies, people don't uh, spend that much. Of course, with COVID, it's become even worse. So, you know, yes. like people don't want to spend just anything. So it's a little harder here, I feel. You know, and then there's also here you are, you you are against in some way, there's the rural artist. I mean, which I have tremendous respect for. I mean, they're doing, you know, the, the traditional art forms of India. Right. Um, right. But then there is a whole group of people who can't appreciate the difference between the rural artists and the urban artists. So they kind of start comparing uh, contemporary you know, art with rural traditional art, which is not fair because this is coming from two totally different uh, spaces, right? Right. So there's a lot of things here which are very different than if you're working outside India. That's what I've found. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. I, th- I think the next question is something to do with uh, a whole lot of artists or the creators who actually go through it. Uh, Mm. So I want to ask you, how do you manage to put out a product uh, when you're not in your elements or, you know, when you're having the creator's block? (laughs) (laughs) So um, I would say that like, um, uh, it depends. Like if I have to give something very immediately, then obviously I don't have time to say, oh, I can't do this. Um, (laughs) Right. I, I then keep, I then keep some time where I can just dabble, like just kind of scribble or just do whatever, you know, related to that particular project where I'm not like totally focused on the outcome. Um, and then I, I keep working on, you know, the set structure or whatever I'm, I'm, you know, making or designing or whatever. So there are two aspects that be going but I do tend to take like um so if I do find I'm in a creative block the best thing that works for me is to completely leave it for some time you know like um, yeah to just take a break I mean from art sometimes I just have to take a break even for a week I don't touch art I don't touch anything because um it's a time when I think my mind my emotions my that energy of creativity needs to just refuel you know, so I started right. seeing that it's a recharging time. And I, earlier I used to get really like worked up, you know, like I used to be like, oh my God, I can't, 
like i'll sit down and nothing's coming you know so yes. sound you know one thing uh, shweta is also that um consistency has reduced those creative blocks so i yes. remember even when my dance teacher you know used to tell us to improvise when i was mm-hmm. dancing i remember there was a time i was very stuck so i was you know doing uh, an improvisation i was not flowing right and that day i said to her i said today i just can't you know and she's like no this is not you know she in hindi said ye nahi chalega <laughs> she's yeah. like <laughs> right all be up to that it should not be that one moment you're in the mood and one moment you're not in the mood it should be a, a you know something which is always there and that thing stayed with me but it took a long time to develop and i've seen it develops only by consistently being in it you know there are phases as i'm saying with every i think any creative person you need to totally leave that thing for some time you know sometimes you just take a break where you're not even looking at that but outside of it when you're sitting or when you're kind of you know you, you've decided that okay for one month i'm going to be doing this project or something you can't afford days where you're like okay now i'm not <laughs> you know i do <laughs> so if you're tired I, mean, i definitely i find if i get too tired or something then creatively you do become uh, lower in your you know uh, expression so you have to rest I mean, for me um, especially you know uh, being a little more feminine and stuff i find that um, rest is a very important part of creativity so the you know it, and rest doesn't only mean you have to sleep rest means just being at ease being calm and then the creativity flows much more easily right right i mean yeah. totally agree with you i think uh, leaving uh, you know what you're doing or you what you intend to do or you're compulsively doing it because you know you have the deadline coming mm-hmm. up i i think uh, i totally agree right you have to like give it some space get into the zone of you know just unwinding yourself probably mm-hmm. with another activity or just you know just 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 yeah. being yourself yeah. totally works absolutely yeah. all right um okay i i mean okay the next question is interesting i am interested to talk about it <laughs> right um so during the pandemic you started a project called as uh, doodles of wisdom so what was the idea behind this project oh. and how did it start and what is it all about yeah <laughs> So yeah I mean I think that was such an on the spur kind of uh project mm-hmm. it was one of the very rare projects where I just it just literally was overnight like I with Shivani art and design was much more thought out um you know it was much more like okay I want to have a space for doing my art and my design work and you know like things like that's how I thought about having such a space but doodles of right. wisdom was more like um you know this pandemic thing started and i remember like i was i was sitting on my table and nothing was coming out like it was like you know like i i remember i used to start, there was a you know 3 4 days i'm just scribbling something and writing a poem cuz i i nothing was coming and then i spoke to a few of my art friends and everybody was blocked you know like nobody oh. was able to really <laughs> think much so that time i remember that i um I just that night I started you know I used to do a lot of illustrative work like a lot of illustrations a lot of um mm-hmm. cartoonish kind of stuff with Sadhguru's quotes you know so right. uh, one of the truth and truth event of, of Isha that time I had made a, a lot of different quotes related to that so yes. I just happened to start glancing over some of them you know it was like I was just uh, going through my feed and I just started glancing through it and um suddenly i felt like connected you know like i felt like this is what i think i need to see and probably others need to see because it's a time when everything is so confusing and people don't know where to so it was like i wanted to reach out you know and and pure painting work has like you can of course every artistic form reaches out to people in some way like the moment you are you are connecting your energy the other person connects but this was still like you know i wanted to do something which even the very general people could connect to so it was kind of like you know something like that like that's how then this uh, doodles of wisdom happened 
So yeah, basically it was kind of like this um, period where there was a need to connect to people and in a fun, lighthearted way, which, you know, otherwise artwork, there is a certain niche population or niche people that can connect if you write very poetry or something deep. You know, not everybody. It had to be more relatable, you know. Right. And, and I just felt like, you know, my other work and this work is different. That work is coming from a dimension which is much more deeper, much more kind of subtler, you know. Mm -hmm. So I wanted something which was just quirky and fun. And then I was like, I, I didn't think of it even in terms of anything like, you know, commercial or anything. It was just I wanted to start doodles. Of them. And so that's yes. how and I found like through that, you know, I started doing these art challenges um, where people would just, you know, I'd give them some prompt and they started making art. And I started finding that people are so wanting to express and be creative, right. you know. And so that I think, so I've let Doodles of Wisdom kind of organically find its way, you know, like I've not had any set plan for it. And more and more you find that it's moving in the direction of um, just kind of uh, reaching out to people through art. So now, like, I want to do workshops through it. I want to, um, you know, um, uh, do various maybe, like, you know, therapeutic workshops or even just intuitive watercolor workshops. So that's how I'm looking at the space of Doodles of Wisdom, just like kind of free flowing creativity, you know, and which is right. more relatable. So doodles again was a name because it's again, more relatable. Otherwise people feel like, Oh, I can't draw, you know, but doodling, it's like, okay, oh, I can doodle. I can make a stick figure, you know? So, so right. I to be something very connect, people can connect to it very easily. Right. Right. That's how I mean, work. uh, yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. Um, I want to tell the listeners that uh, you should check out Doodles of Wisdom on Facebook or Instagram. And uh, I would like to say that, you know, I really connect with it. Uh, you know, it's so very earthy because I think in all of it, you bring out the element of uh, all the elements of nature. Mm -hmm. And even with the colors, it's it's very subtle. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, the very... Uh, very nice things like you know the tiny little birds or the butterfly <laughs> or the flower uh, and it's it's so very uh i don't know it, it just fills <laughs> the space wonderfully well and it tells you what it is i think it, it just strikes a chord with uh, i mean if, if i don't know i i'm not sure with others but for with me I think it just strikes a chord with me and I can so totally get and I just love the um, the spread of colors and also what you write and even the font in which you write I think it's just like it just strikes to me so I want to know uh I really want to know how uh I mean was it something like you wanted to get uh, bring the elements of nature into it uh and I also want to know like uh I know you find inspiration in many things. So is is nature, uh, you know, probably your inspiration in a way? <laughs> Could you tell us more about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think um, I think I get my energy from nature. Like I've actually I was living in Mangalore. So when I started Doodles of Wisdom, I was living in Mangalore for a year. And I wow. think okay. one of the reasons it started because my place was like right next to the ocean or the sea. Oh, wow. And it was just, I used to feel like this vibrancy in my body there, you know, and it was like I used to come out in the form of, you know, the expression. So in fact, I come back to Delhi and I feel a little different. And I was just telling my mom, I'm like, okay, I think I need to go back to recharge. <laughs> but yes. Like, so nature is definitely, I think, um, you know, where I do draw a lot of, I, I think it's almost, it's been almost unconscious, you know, like from the beginning. And I think even when I started my journey in art, like, as I told you, my teacher's place, it had a beautiful garden also upstairs. And a lot of early sketching and work did come from sitting in there, you know, sitting there and just doing um and my mom is also into gardening so we have a nice terrace garden wow. so okay. I, think, I, I think the main elements I started even sketching when I first started was all nature 
And, you know, my teacher always used to say, take photos or do real life. And, you know, like I used to feel like she used to say, you can go on the road and just make a sabji wala, you know, but I somehow felt more connected to sit in a garden and just make like different types of leaves or to just look at the branches. So that's how it's found its way. Like now I see, like, I think, in fact, it was only a few months ago, somebody started making me realize and I'm putting nature into everything. And I also started seeing, yeah, the nature is really coming into So it was almost unconscious. But yeah, like now I realize that it, it plays such a big role in, uh, you know, in not just art, but even I would say my spiritual connection, my meditation, like nature is something I feel very connected to. So I think I recharge there. Right. So that's how the, the colors kind of, I guess, are. And and I've, I've, I've quite consciously also been working on changing my palette a little bit. So if you see my early work, it was like a bombardment of bright colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Colors and rest of you. When we now look at some of my older work, I'm like, oh my god, Shivani, did you use those? <laughs> I can use the colors that I use, like bright red. Then you know, like, so my color palette is definitely toned down. I think right. I've got much more paste, you know, pastel in the last, um, right. let's say maybe seven eight months. Yes. Yeah. And I even in Doodles of Wisdom somehow do feel like I want to keep the tone a little more pastel. Like I do like putting in bright colors every now and then, but my shades are a little more lighter because I think it has something to do with your, your, how you are within you, you know, like, oh, yes. I feel, you know, like, like I remember that time it was much more loud. Like, you know, that, that bright color time it was more loud. I was more like out there. And yeah. now, no more settled a little more you know stable within myself and automatically I'm finding that the pastel colors the you know lighter tones yes. those things are happening yeah it's not, it's not like you have to be like be like oh I stand out you know it, it can be subtle yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah and I think it's, it's beautifully being expressed uh you know your your probably your inner journey is just being expressed beautifully out in the work that you're doing so yeah. yes yeah. Uh, that's wonderful yeah. all right um okay uh shivani so i want to know how do you move from one project to another mm-hmm. uh i mean the project you're i mean it could be like you know say like doodles of wisdom or uh, you know it could be shivani art and design a project mm-hmm. with that or i know you also uh, are planning to start a collage based artwork so there are yeah. different projects so so how do you move from one project to another Mm-hmm. Does it come naturally or is it something which is planned? Uh, how does it happen? So I think, um, you know, when art is not just a commercial venture or, um, you know, something that you kind of are pursuing as a career path, but it's also more part of your process of your own inner journey then I think um, a lot of movement between projects, etc., is sometimes not very planned, um, but comes more from, I think, adapting to the situation and to even, um, you know, the situation could be external or it could be internal. Um, You know, it could be your own health. It could be the world situation. So, for example, you know, if we look at uh, Doodles of Wisdom, that was very unplanned. I mean, it actually came out from a need that I started seeing suddenly arose, you know, where I I started seeing that um, people, you know, there was a need within me to reach out to people. Um, I could see that people were struggling and it was a very emotionally distressful time for everybody. And my old way of doing art and exhibitions and, you know, creating artwork, suddenly it didn't have that kind of meaning. And I found more meaning in being able to connect to a very wide kind of audience. And that's what brought me to creating doodles of wisdom. Um, you know, it's amazing now that I see like there's a 10 year old who wants to learn art and, you know, is 
you know, these days talking to me. And there's also an 80 year old who's suddenly, you know, she's so interested in illustrations and she's it's rekindled her inter- interest to pick up, you know, paints. So that's the beauty of, I think, what, um, you know, I was, I found, I was able to do with, with Doodles of Wisdom, which Shivani Art and Design was a much more subtler, artistic kind of a platform, uh, which I still uh, find, it's not Doodles of Wisdom doesn't mean that 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 finishes. It's actually, you know, you're finding a varied audience. So, so this adapting, I think happens when, when your when your spiritual journey and your art is so connected. Um, similarly, as you asked me about the collage project, like that also came from a need to adapt to a certain physical issue that I experienced about, you know, three years back where my wrist uh, kind of, you know, I developed the Aquarians and my wrist lost functionality. I, it became stiff. I couldn't move it. it. There was swelling, and the doctor told me that literally you can't um, you can't pick up a paintbrush. So um, at that time, suddenly I realized that now I have to try out something different. Um, so I started picking up, you know, my watercolor paper, which I you know was unused watercolor paper, um, which I had uh, you know done various scribbles on with watercolor, but I hadn't used it. So I started just cutting those pieces of paper and creating multiple art pieces, which, you know, I plan to also exhibit in the near future. So that was how the collage work came up. So every time I found that I was, the project comes up from either something I see externally in the world, a need, or it comes from my own inner, um, inner requirements, my inner, uh, you know, uh, need to adapt. So I think that's something which um, is probably different than, than when you're doing a very commercially commercial kind of venture. Um, because, you know, with a commercial venture, you don't have too much flexibility to adapt to something. You can't take up something new. But with this, um, you, you keep looking at ways to kind of... Um, adapt with the given situation. So, um, yeah, that's how I kind of move between projects. And I think now with Doodles of Wisdom, I see that um, over the years, like we're talking about moving between projects, you know, it's it's been almost now like 10 years of doing so many different types of, um, you know, artworks and projects. And somewhere I feel like a doodles of wisdom kind of encapsulates everything within itself. So it's, it's, it's like a, it's like a kind of, a, it's a space I want to build where everything, all these different aspects are brought in and, you know, when, when doesn't have to move the entire project, but rather, you know, has space to fit in various aspects and diversify. So that's what I hope to do with doodles of wisdom. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, so do you do you think careers in art, um, like you know, it could be music, painting, poetry, sculpting, uh, can be lucrative if one puts the right intention into them. Um, and also post the pandemic, do you think we as people mm. should uh, you know explore this feminine side? Uh, you know, I, I call this fe- the feminine side because you know it's it's all with respect to the softer aspects, the subtle yeah. elements. So and bring it on to, into our lives. What do you think? What do you think about this? See, definitely they can be lucrative. I mean, there's like so many artists and sculptors and musicians that are like so wealthy and so well off. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not lucrative. Definitely there can be, you can have a lucrative career in them. But it depends on how you uh, focus, what your focus is and how you want to move with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's it's not easy to make it lucrative. Like I would say, if you take up something which is much more commercially kind of uh, viable and a lot of people are into it, then def- like if you take up a food business, okay, or you take up um, textile or something, it definitely is more lucrative. It's easier to 
uh, you know, get people to come. If I put out, put out only jewelry, I know I can get many more people than if I put out paintings, you know. People may admire my paintings, but not that many people may buy yeah, my paintings. Right. But right. if I put out necklaces and, you know, scarves, I know people will buy them. So there is a difference definitely between what sells and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. But I've seen artists, I mean, even my teacher herself, I mean, she has made a very lucrative career out of um, art. Like, you know, I mean, uh, she was, of course, from Delhi School of Art. She also, and she even now says, like, teaching is a very important part of an artist because you grow and you also um it also is a way to fund yourself to do whatever you're doing, you know. Um, so that is definitely helps, I would say, being an artist to take the teaching route. But otherwise, if you want to make it as, uh, you know, big as an artist, even selling your paintings, then you have to approach galleries. You have to take part in several exhibitions. You have to meet curators. I mean, I know people that are doing well in terms of selling their art, but they spend like almost, you know, more than half the time that they create, they have to go and they have to, you know, find those places to sell. And then they have to become very specific in their style. So you can't keep experimenting like with things, you know, like uh, the experimentation has to become more narrow, you know, um, when you're focused that, okay, now I'm going to start selling. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Being lucrative means you have to be also very practical about your art, right? Which is not a bad thing. I think it's, it's, it's also very good to go that direction. Um, maybe not immediately. Like I think, um, you should let yourself explore for some time, you know, uh, not yes. confine yourself. And then after that, you can start taking that route of being very narrow. Um, but um, but yeah, it's, it is definitely more difficult. I can't deny that. I mean, you know, like, um, yeah. and in India, as I said, it's a little harder than outside. I think there's more avenues, um, outside, even though I can't say India, like in Diwali time and all now is starting a lot of, you know, fests and all where they allow artists and allow people to put their work. It's again looking at ways to bring out your artwork. Like as I said, products, this and these kind of things go much faster than you know your painting will go. So, um, so but you know that's what I'm saying. You know, if you want to like really make it big in Bollywood or you want to make it into a very big career, it's going to take a lot of work, but it's possible. You know, even even I know doodle artists that are doing well. You know, like they are, you know, um, they do wall murals and I see many people getting into now the teaching space and, you know, uh, doing many kinds of workshops. I mean, essentially with any work, you have to put in your entire energy into that for at least a few years. And it does show off in a different way. And I think the kind of um, well-being that you get from inside, you know, that makes up for a lot of, uh, so, so that's what I'm saying. If you t- take up a jewelry business or you take up a textile business, you probably will earn faster and more than, you know, a painting business. But if you give it time and you focusedly work in that direction, even your, um, you can at least do reasonably well. All right. All right. Yeah. So it's it's about the intention and yeah. also uh, figuring out what would work out practically. Um, yeah. like, uh, like a lot of people like yeah. to, you know, do to, to, to have a side business. So yes. sometimes, you don't put, sometimes you don't want to put pressure on your art. Like even for me, um, you know, I do write also actually. Um, so I take up some kind of social media kind of marketing work or those kind of projects so that I am not totally uh, kind of uh, putting all my effort onto just art and and that also makes it difficult like then then you start getting worried that okay my art is not giving me the dividend yeah. so 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 then right. if you remove that pressure then you have to take up something else and yeah. as I said I find and I've seen a lot of people around me usually a teaching has been one thing which helps with that 
because you're okay. sharing your knowledge and you're also you're be, being very creative with teaching because you have to come up with new ways to get people to learn and take up different types of skills and so you're growing also mm-hmm. so i think it goes very beautifully together teaching and art yes yes, yes. yeah that's good and yes uh, coming to the second part of my question is uh, you know post the pandemic do you think people should explore the feminine side of it with with more yeah. of this softer aspects and yeah. these mediums yes i think in fact even now like i'm seeing like during this pandemic time itself so much uh, people are exploring i mean i'm just looking at social media these days and i'm amazed by the amount of somebody's doing photography somebody is like putting a song up somebody is like started painting so i think already that started like um i think it's very normal for a human being to gravitate towards you know arts whenever you are healing or whenever you are in some emotional mental turmoil i think it's kind of a natural tendency for a human being to move that direction so i can already see that happening and um definitely like it's uh, you know i think this side it's nice to see now i think i mean that's what i'm saying 10 years ago you'd see much less of it around like there weren't that many people exploring this side like a lot of people were just completely into things that would give money or you know like the more masculine kind of fields but now people are willing to take that risk you know and kind of uh, try different things out so it's happening you know and i think it's beautiful that it's happening um and uh, but i think the one issue with everybody is the money and the you know the how much do you earn out of it which starts coming into a lot of people once you get into these areas then you start looking at oh my god i'm not earning with this so that aspect you probably need to kind of also take care of in some way um and do this on the side to your kind of able to completely take over uh like completely give yourself to art otherwise it'll be conflict with it yeah that's what i feel right i i think as long as one can uh balance uh yeah. you know the probably the means of living and also you know probably putting out or uh, giving time to the passion that they want to pursue i think that should uh, probably work out in, in in the long run all right yeah yeah okay um so i want to know uh how do you keep yourself productive in in the multitude of things that you do um i know it's it's more so uh, difficult for an artist uh, you know considering you know it, it's it's difficult because you don't know how much time you would uh, know that you would want to give up for this project because creative work always takes time yeah. because there's a lot of thinking to do or probably you want to get into a different zone altogether to do it so mm. how do you stay productive Yeah. Yes, that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, definitely I think my meditation and yoga is a very big part of it. Um mm-hmm. I don't without that I could even do anything, you know, that that gives me the balance and the stability to even take up something like this. Um okay. so I would say that is the main thing, but along with that like um constantly kind of uh as i said even rest is a very important and so when i say rest it also comes into your meditation um so like when you are sitting and quietly silently that's also rest like basically when you're completely at ease because uh, the creative energy is also draining sometimes because you you put in so much passion and after that you feel kind of like sometimes i when i do creative work after that i'm drained you know so so then for like one or two days i just need to kind of be in a space of just relaxing myself you know to get back to something again so um you know and then of course doing other things also like um keeping your interests a bit var- varied like it doesn't have to only be that you know you're just doing art or i'm just doing this so so you could take up like cooking baking or you know i love going for walks um i love like when nature i love going into like the river to swim or you know ocean you know? <laughs> so like i'm a real water baby <laughs> wow <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, i think continuously keeping yourself a bit varied so that you're not 
like your focus needs to be there, but you shouldn't become uh, again compulsive. I think that's one thing, you know. And and when you're when you're in that creative kind of space, sometimes you're just like you're kind of like a crazy person. You're just like in it, right? And so when <laughs> you kind of and 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 as you're saying to balance different types of things, I think. Um, taking those breaks between whatever you're doing and that gap where you're doing something else or you're just kind of relaxing or just talking to a friend or, you know, somebody you feel energized by. So keeping on bringing back your energy, you know, and of course, yoga meditation, I would say, I mean, you know, is one of the best ways. So, you know, doing your kriyas, if you're in Isha or whatever, whichever practice you're doing, you know, so, so that kind of keeps reviving that energy back. Yeah. All right. Um, so I know you've already answered, uh, you know, what takes care of your well-being, <laughs> that is yoga and meditation. <laughs> uh, but I want to know what else do you indulge in, you know, apart from the art that you do and also yoga and meditation? Is there anything else that you do apart from all of this? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I've been so much into, you know, volunteering and stuff for many years. So that was the main thing that I was, you know, and I think a lot of my time is so like um, so I have a yantra at home also the Devi yantra Sanadhi. so you know um, I used to also keep like you know during Navratri times or during full moon new moon people coming in so a lot of that used to happen right I'm a little more quiet on that end um, but I love like you know I mean things related to health and well-being I you know like looking into my diet or workout um, you know um, I, I love um, for example we bought this we've not bought but we rented out a little farmlet so we get a lot of lovely fresh vegetables wow. so, so you know I love seeing making different types of salads or you know like um my mom does gardening upstairs. So my mom is into a lot of gardening, ceramics. So for example, you know, just uh, playing with clay sometimes, air dry clay, making different types of jewelry. Um, so it's just like keeping myself like occupied with different things. Um, I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, which are not necessarily like creative in the sense that, oh, I have to kind of focus, do something in a yes. very focused way. We're just kind of um, uh, building my relaxed way yeah. but I think the main thing again comes down to I think a lot of my time goes into um, my yogic practices you know I think probably I don't get much time because morning you know that itself takes a lot of time and by the time you finish your meals and all you get a little bit of time and then again evening. so I think a lot of my and walks you know your your kriyas and just I think that takes a lot of my time Yes. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's good to know that you are, uh, you know, engaged with a whole lot of things. Yeah. And I think the base of it all is yoga and meditation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Without anything, anything would come out. It would be like a blank slate. You know, you're just like okay. And that's what I think it is. Like the moment you start coming into the picture, you know, like, um, you know, you have. That's when you have to stop because right. this. This whole thing doesn't come out of you. It comes from a different source. So the moment you're not connected to that yeah. source, you know, which again is who you're your only, then again, you're like, nothing comes yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, yes. I mean, I think there are periods yeah. when, uh, you know, I go through that, that, okay, oh, no, no, I have to like do it, <laughs> you know, uh, not like, uh, you know, like probably you miss out on something and you're like, okay, no, th this day didn't go well or probably yeah. I couldn't give as much as I could on, on any day. So then I was like, okay, no, I have to do this, yeah. you know, in, in, in the way that yeah. it has to be done. <laughs> so yes, totally. Yeah. Great. Uh, so we, we come to the last section, which I call as the pruner yeah. spotlight section. Uh, so I'm going to run okay. you through a few questions. It could be on the personal level or the professional level. So you could answer okay. to me in a word or two or a couple of sentences. It's it's left up to you. Okay, okay? sure, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, uh, so what is your ikigai? So ikigai is nothing but, you know, the reason for your being. So what do you think motivates you to go about your day? Anything? Uh, <laughs> I think I'd have to say 
Sadhguru, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's the only reason I think it's just like, you know, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if you're going to say the same answer to the next question I'm going to ask. <laughs> okay. So the question is any person who inspires you on this journey? <laughs> Same again. <laughs> well, okay, let me try to say something else. He's anyways there. Okay, so so that's why I want to say him, but okay. Um I don't think there is any person like my art doesn't come from any person actually. You know, like it's not like I'm looking at somebody's work or something and saying this is what inspires me. Okay. So I don't think there is any person. It's just what I feel from inside which is inspiring me. So I don't wow, it's so <laughs> I mean that's so well said. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Super. All right. Um okay, the next question is interesting. Um So hypothetically if you turn out to be the richest person in the world tomorrow what would you like to do or would you continue to do what you're already doing Hmm Well I think um I would definitely want to give the money to Sadhguru to do something sensible because I don't have the ability to do too much sensible stuff with my money <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, but you know, of course, then you can do what you're doing very leisurely. Like right now there's always some pressure and stuff, then you can right. do what you're doing much more leisurely. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Um is there any piece of painting or art that you want to do in this lifetime? Um like do you mean already that exists or something of my own that i i i'm thinking of i mean it could be something which already exists or is there something on your mind and yes you want to do this painting in this lifetime anything so i know my answers are so unidirected like to sadguru that i'm feeling a bit like you know like a cult but it's somehow everything is directed in that direction so i can't do more but <laughs> you can say it too that's all right <laughs> had this uh, you know desire to that once in my lifetime you know i w- i want to either make a scarf for him which is like the most intricate and detailed work i've ever done or a painting which is like probably the masterpiece of ever which i can make you know so one two i want to give him so it's like it may take 2 3 4 years to make but something like that i that my life i would i would love to do yeah wow wonderful and it's so i don't know i don't know so amazing <laughs> it can happen yeah yes yes i think it will <laughs> yeah. okay um what is your definition of success um i think success is is when you're really feeling well and your well-being like you know if you've been able to really um you know create well-being for yourself where you are actually joyful and happy just being i don't think there's any a bigger success i'm not saying it like of course success is like oh you have money or this and that but like if if somebody can just be so joyful like i've seen people like you know like even my maid she has nothing but the sometimes when i'm down i look at her and i say oh my god shivani learn from her you know like so that success to me that you've you've been able to do that to yourself yes. yeah yeah i i think i think being uh, joyful is uh, i think it's very underrated or probably yeah. it's, it's probably changing now i think considering the pandemic i think yeah. there's a whole yeah. shift in the mindset of people and i think people are recognizing this and yeah. i hope people recognize this and you know take this like you know yes this is the goal uh, if whatever yeah. that they want to call it <laughs> exactly exactly great okay uh, so one last question okay. uh what is one key takeaway or learning that you want you would want to share with uh, you know the oh. other pruners out there uh there could be people who are probably uh, starting to st- uh you know venture out on their own with with a, a probably wanting to pursue a passion or probably were already on this journey or probably wanting to scale 
or they could be artists out here and they want to know how to you know start a lucrative business so what would you like to say to them <laughs> um i would say that you know just keep doing what you're doing um no matter what comes in front of you like if you have a goal and a vision then you have to keep at it like you know it's it's not rosy romantic whatever people see on the outside is all the rosy part of it but you yes. you have to make it like your life you know it's i don't think you can ever achieve anything and this is something i can only say today like i don't think 10 years ago i could have said this but i think you can achieve anything which i'm also learning you know but you can't achieve anything unless you give yourself 100% to it like 100% is like it should be your you should be breathing it and living it you know and and then anything is possible and and even if it doesn't happen then you are fulfilled that you tried it with your 100% and it didn't happen so so then there are no regrets so essentially you know so so just take it up with your 100% even if you're doing it for a month do it 100% so whatever you're doing and for whatever time you're doing it just um and keep at it because things are not going to happen this for some for some people they do happen overnight and that's great but mm-hmm. you don't have to be like oh my god this didn't happen for me overnight that person got success like overnight you know sometimes it takes a very long road um to get that so i've also found that you know you just have to be at it and i think that just dissolves you like so that process itself is dissolving because when you're doing it and you're seeing things on the way you also become humble you also start realizing what life really is great i mean that's so beautifully said and uh, yes keep at it and do it no matter what <laughs> i think I would say one of the main things actually is use whatever you're doing as a process to grow you know like like don't like whatever you're doing just do it for growth and i find that it never you're going to fail that's that's what i've learned yes it's it, i think it's all about uh, investing in ourselves yeah. and i don't think we could ever go wrong as long as we're investing in ourselves yeah. exactly. wow okay uh, <laughs> that was a good one thanks thanks for that uh, so shivani how can uh, one reach out to you okay um well right now the doodles of wisdom on instagram is probably the best um uh, play like that's the most active site for me um i also have it on facebook um and then there's shivani art and design which is also on instagram and facebook so these are the two main places i have a website shivaniagarwal.com which in the next few months should become more uh, relevant right now it's 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 there but it's not a very active site but i would say doodles of wisdom is the best place and uh, otherwise you know there's also my email address and stuff you know that uh, uh, i think it's on my website so people can mail me for anything if they want yeah great uh, so thank you so much for that and i'll uh, surely share these links in the episode description sure. Uh so thank I mean I w- I would like to uh thank you again for you know uh agreeing to be on the show yeah. and uh, for all the amazing things that you're doing and uh, sharing your story uh which has been inspiring uh because uh, you know leaving the mundane and uh you know uh, journeying through something which is unknown um i think it's very beautiful and uh, you are a testament of that and okay. i'm so grateful that i am talking to you uh, thank you. so thank you again it was a pleasure to have you here thank you shweta thank you so much it was lovely being here <laughs> <laughs> thank you again all the